This is the new 2022 Ford Maverick, and it's the latest Ford pickup truck with a starting price of around $20,000. You already know about the Ford F-Series, the big pickup truck, and the Ranger, Ford's midsize truck. Well, now there's the Maverick, a small new entry-level truck with a standard hybrid engine. Ford says they're targeting around 40 miles per gallon in the city. And today, I'm gonna take you on a thorough tour of it. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era. We've had some great sales recently on Cars and Bids, including this Toyota FJ Cruiser convertible, which sold for over $24,000, very special car. This 2018 BMW M5 sold for $75,000, and this Tesla Roadster sold for just under $100,000, a tremendous example of that rare car. If you're looking to sell your cool car from the 1980s and up, Cars and Bids is the place to do it. You'll get the most interest and the most views and the most bids on your car. And if you're looking to buy a cool modern enthusiast car, check out Cars and Bids with great selection and daily auctions at carsandbids.com. So let's talk Maverick. A few years ago, Ford announced that they were giving up on their car models to focus on trucks, SUVs, and crossovers, and boy, have they followed through. Since then, we've gotten a new Explorer, a new Escape, a new F-150, the Mach-E electric crossover, a new Bronco, a new Bronco Sport, and now this, a new pickup truck. Like I said, the Maverick has a starting price of around $20,000. Now, it's based on the Ford Bronco Sport, but one big difference is the base level engine. While the Bronco Sport comes standard with a gasoline-powered three-cylinder, this comes standard with a hybrid powertrain. Ford hasn't said how much horsepower yet, but they have said they're targeting 40 miles per gallon city, which would be huge for a pickup. Ford says they're looking for better city fuel economy than a Honda Civic, which would be amazing. But if you don't want the hybrid, you can also also upgrade to a turbocharged gas-powered EcoBoost four-cylinder with 245 horsepower. That's the same engine that's optional in the Bronco Sport. To me, this truck is clearly aimed at city dwellers who only sort of need a truck. Small size, good gas mileage, hybrid power. Think of it like a smaller version of the Honda Ridgeline. But Ford says it does have some truck capabilities. Available all-wheel drive, it can tow up to 4,000 pounds. Payload capacity is 1,500 pounds. And Ford says it will fit most ATVs in the bed. And today, I'm gonna show you all that and everything else. Now, this is a pre-production truck, so I can't drive it yet, but I'm very excited to do that when it goes on sale this fall. But I can show you all of the quirks and features, and so today I'm going to do just that. Let's get started. All right, I'm gonna start the quirks and features of the Maverick under the hood, where you have, of course, the engine, and this is a big deal, a hybrid powertrain standard in this pickup truck. Ford is very proud of the fact this is the first truck ever with a standard hybrid engine. Other trucks have offered hybrids, but always as an option, not standard like here. Now, Ford hasn't announced power numbers for this engine yet, but we know the optional engine in the Maverick is the same one that's optional in the Bronco Sport, turbo four-cylinder, 245 horsepower, so you can figure that this powertrain probably 180, maybe 200 horsepower, since this is the base model engine compared to that one. Now, it's worth noting that the hybrid powertrain will not be offered with all-wheel drive in this truck. You get a Maverick with the hybrid, you are getting front-wheel drive, but Ford says it's at least relatively capable with the hybrid engine. It can tow up to 2,000 pounds with the hybrid, and it has a payload capacity of 1,500 pounds with the hybrid, or as Ford told me in a press release, 37 bags of 40-pound mulch. Thank you for doing that calculation for me, Ford. I appreciate it. But the very best thing about the hybrid powertrain in this truck is undoubtedly the fuel economy. Like I said earlier, Ford is targeting 40 miles per gallon city, which is an unbelievable figure for a truck. Again, they said they want to get better city fuel economy in this pickup truck than the Honda Civic gets, which would really be an amazing number. So if you want something with truck duties, but you want fuel economy, this will undoubtedly be the top choice for that job. But if you 
want more power or all-wheel drive, you will have to step up to the gasoline engine. Like I said, Turbo EcoBoost, 245 horsepower, and it will offer front or all-wheel drive with the larger gas-powered engine. And with that powertrain, Ford says you can tow up to 4,000 pounds, which frankly is pretty good for a truck like this. And since I'm talking mechanicals, obviously worth mentioning again, this truck is based on the new Ford Bronco Sport. So this is a front-wheel drive platform, or you can get all-wheel drive on the compact Bronco Sport SUV. And next up, we move inside the Maverick, and there is a lot of interesting stuff to cover in here, but I'm going to start with the materials in this truck, which are pretty crazy in this interior. For one thing, the seats, this cloth pattern almost looks like denim on the seat itself. You can see it's mostly blue in here, and that matches a lot of blue in the rest of the interior. The door panel, for instance, is largely blue, and same with a lot of the rest of the plastic in here. You have a very blue interior, but as you can see, there are more colors in here than just that. You have a lot of orange accents. For instance, on the door panel, this little piece that you grab to close the door is orange. Very odd looking thing, but frankly, I find it kind of cool. You also have orange accents in the center console. This little storage area up front is all orange, as you can see, and you have a little orange tray further back, too. A lot of orange accents. Same deal on the climate vents. You have these little orange stripes going across the climate vents, all to kind of make the truck seem a little cooler. And you also have this sort of weird composite looking material on the dashboard. You can see it here, meant to take the place of cheap plastic. It definitely looks like tougher and more interesting than what you would normally find in a pickup truck or a vehicle at this price point. And that material also appears on the door panel. You can see this sort of weird grayish whitish composite looking material. And there are some weird like elevated angles on the door panel itself, which make it stand out even further. Kind of interesting. Now, obviously, if you want a more normal interior, like gray or black or whatever, I'm sure Ford will offer that too. But I find this to be sufficiently quirky and interesting for a vehicle like this, especially because I suspect Ford is trying to get new truck buyers with this who are like city dwellers who have never had a truck before and want something funky and modern. And so offering some of this weird interior stuff as opposed to just bare bones basic truck stuff is kind of a cool way to do it. And it's not for everyone in here for sure, but I like this interior. But anyway, next up, before I move on to the rest of the quirks and features in this interior, I want to talk about equipment for a little bit. This truck starts at $19,995, right around $20,000 for the very base model, which of course no one is really going to get. But if you get the most basic truck standard is an 8-inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. This truck also has standard automatic forward collision braking, so if it senses you're about to get into an accident, it'll slam on the brakes and try to stop in time for you. Those are pretty cool features to have standard, especially at that price point, just around 20 grand. It's also pretty cool to have a pickup truck around 20 grand at all. That's a very underserved market since most trucks start in the mid-20s and go up quickly once you add options and features. Now, as for this truck, this is a mid-trim version of the Maverick. It's an XLT model. They're going to offer base XL, mid-level XLT, and then top-spec Lariat models. And so this is the XLT, not fully equipped, of course, but I suspect this is how a lot of the customers will actually order the truck, sort of in a mid-level trim like this one. Now, Ford says they're also going to have a first edition Maverick as well, sort of based on the Lariat, but with some like unique accessories only available on the first edition model. If you want to be one of the early adopters of the Maverick, you can go for that. But normal Maverick will only have those three trims, XL, XLT, and Lariat, with this one XLT in the middle. But anyway, onto the interior quirks and features. Now, when you climb in here, you see a lot of Ford stuff that you're pretty much used to. For instance, this steering wheel is used in a lot of different Ford models. Same deal with the turn signal stock and the wiper stock coming off of the steering column, used in a lot of different Fords. Same deal, for example, with the window switches, the mirror controls, and the door panel. Typical Ford stuff in here. So you have some sort of usual Ford items that you're used to, combined with this kind of funky, weird colored, odd interior, trying to get those younger, funky buyers. But you will notice a few interesting quirks and features in here. One is the gear dial. This is also used in other Ford models, but it is still a rather strange thing. To put it in gear, you just turn this dial, and you can go from park, reverse, or neutral, or drive, depending on where you turn it to. That's your gear selector in this car, and in a lot of recent Fords. Also unusual in the center console are these three buttons here, which all have sort of unusual diagrams on them. The one on the left has like a flag, a leaf, and a snowflake. That allows you to change between your different drive modes. Flag would be sport 
sport mode, the leaf is eco, and the snowflake, of course, would be snow. By the way, speaking of drive modes, one important item to note here, if you're looking to get a Maverick and take it off-roading, the XLT and Lariat trim levels will offer an FX4 package, which is designed for, like, off-roaders who want to take this out onto the trails. It's going to offer more underbody protection and better, like, off-road ready tires and more drive modes. You're going to get a few extra drive modes that correspond to things you would do when you're off the pavement. Now in the middle, this button here with the little tire and the dots coming off of it, that turns off your traction control. So you press that and traction control turns off. Maybe the most interesting button is over on the right, the hand with the little circles, that turns on auto hold, meaning you come to a stoplight, you don't want to hold your foot on the brake. If you have that on, you can take your foot off the brake and the truck will hold automatically with the brake lights on until it's time to start going again. Also in this area, you can see a little slot that is for credit cards or a parking card if you're coming up to your office and you have your little parking garage key card, you can stick it in there so it's always accessible. So you just pull it out, put it in, and then drive off. Or for a credit card, if you're waiting in a drive through line, whatever, you can stick it right there in that helpful little slot, which is surprisingly useful. Also, another rather interesting quirk in this vehicle is next to the infotainment screen in the center, you can see the screen on the left. On the right, you have a little hole, like a rectangular hole. That is, I guess, for storage. <laughs> Seems like an odd place. There is a little lip on the bottom of this hole, so if you put something in in here, it won't slide out when you're accelerating, but it's certainly an odd item to see a little storage hole in there. I suspect Ford will offer a larger screen at some point, which will take the place of that hole. But if you get the smaller screen, like in this truck, then you get a little storage hole next to your screen. Now, next up, another interesting quirk in the gauge cluster. This is the hybrid version, like I mentioned earlier. And so it doesn't have a tachometer. Instead, it has a gauge that shows your current power usage in kilowatts, which is surprisingly interesting to see. No tach, you get that instead. Now, one interesting thing, this goes up to 180 kilowatts, which translates to about 240 horsepower, suggesting that the max power for this truck is actually around 240, which would be pretty strong, about the same as the gasoline engine. I don't have that figure yet, but you can speculate based on what this gauge shows you. But again, a little quirk, no tachometer. Now, next up, another interesting item in this interior, in the center console, you can see uh, this little orange piece sort of sticking out next to the cup holders. That is placed that way so that you can put your phone there. It'll be sort of angled towards you. So if you're driving along and you're like looking at the phone for directions or whatever you might be, you can at least have it looking at you, even if it's not sitting there, you're not picking it up texting. It's facing toward you, which is nice. You also in this area have a spot for a wireless charging pad. You can see it is phone sized and flat, but it looks like this particular model doesn't have the wireless charging pad. So instead, it's just sort of a storage area for phones, but it will be there if you option it. Now, next up, this infotainment system, like I said, nine inch touchscreen in this car comes standard, even at the $20,000 number and also standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is pretty cool. This truck's infotainment, at least in this version, is pretty basic, though. It's worth noting you don't really have much in here, as you can see. It is very responsive, very intuitive, easy to use, but it just doesn't offer all that much. Obviously, you start getting into the higher trim levels and you start to see more features and items incorporated into this infotainment screen. But for this truck, mid-level model, relatively inexpensive, that's pretty much all you get. It's also worth noting there is another screen in the gauge cluster itself. You have traditional gauges for most of the cluster, but there is a small screen in there that provides other information like your current speed, your trip odometer status, your audio information, your Bluetooth information, some car settings, that sort of thing. So you do have two screens in here configurable that you can check and adjust at any given time. Now, next up, since nobody has really sat in this truck yet, it's just being revealed for the first time. I should mention the seating position up here. Obviously, I can't drive it, like I said, but sitting in here, I have good room as a relatively tall adult, great headroom, great leg and knee room. And it also feels like a pretty sturdy seating position. It feels like you're sitting a little bit higher up than you are. Not sure if that'll actually translate to the road. I will find that out when I drive this this fall. But it does feel relatively sturdy of a big upright kind of squared off dashboard that makes you feel stronger inside. It has sort of a brawny truck feel to it, even though this is a front wheel drive hybrid that gets about 40 miles per gallon city. And next up, another interesting interior quirk. When you open up the door, you can see printed on the side of the dashboard, built Ford Tough. You close the door, you can't see it. You look at the car from the outside, you can't see it. Only when the door is open, you have that little Easter egg reminding you every time you open your door that your truck is built Ford Tough.
And next we move on to the back seat in the Maverick, which has some interesting quirks and features, but I'm gonna start with a bit of a surprise. It's fairly roomy back here. Now I say that with my knees right up against the front seat. It doesn't look all that roomy, but for a truck that is smaller than the Ranger, I'm surprised at how much rear seat room you have in the back. It really is adult friendly back here. Obviously not completely comfortable. I can't like recline back here, but I can sit back here. And that's more than I could say for some trucks that are larger than this. So I am surprised at the rear seat room in this truck. And obviously headroom, as you can see, is fantastic. Fine, no problems there. Also worth noting, all of these Maverick models will be configured like this with a crew cab. They're all going to have four full-size doors. There's not going to be different body styles according to Ford, or at least not yet. So every Maverick will have the rear seat this size, even at that $20,000 price point. But anyway, other interesting quirks back here. One is, again, the materials. You have the same weird materials in back that you had up front. The same sort of denim pattern on the seats, as you can see, this sort of blue and the the same orange stitching, which looks definitely interesting, a departure compared to most pickup trucks. You also have the same orange accent on the door pull on the rear door. You can pull it closed by pulling on the orange. And you have that same sort of weird gray white composite material on the door panel. Again, with some of those weird like elevated angles that look kind of cool. So it's just as quirky in back as it is in front. Again, trying to make truck people feel accepted in sort of a non-traditional truck. Now, a few other items worth noting back here. One, I want to talk about charge ports. You have several charge ports back here including a household style charger, which is really cool. Just pull back this cover and there is your household charger. I love to see household chargers integrated into interiors more. It can be very useful, especially on long trips. If someone wants to like plug in a computer or something, that can be very helpful. But you also have two other charge ports, USB and USB-C back here. So all your rear passengers can charge their devices. Also back here, another interesting item, more quirky, is under the seat. This seat bottom lifts up. Pull on this loop and you can lift up the seat bottom and you can access storage back here, a hidden storage compartment underneath the rear seat. So if you're driving this thing around and you don't have like a cover over your bed, you want to keep some smaller items in private, people won't see them, you can store them under the seat and no one will ever find them there. It's worth noting that the seat back also folds down and it can fold down flat so that you have sort of a more flat storage area back here in case you're trying to transport something that you want on a flatter surface like the seat back. By the way, one other interesting item next to the charge ports back here on the back of the front center console, you have this clip, this little hook, basically. Ford calls this the Ford Integrated Tether, and they're going to sell accessories that clip onto this that are designed to fit your lifestyle. So for instance, they're going to offer like a cup holder that fits onto here so rear seat passengers can have cup holders or other different accessories that clip on here so you can have various different things when you're sitting in the back of the car. That's what that's for. And next up, moving around to the back of the Maverick, I'm going to talk bed, but first let's talk tailgate. Now, when you go to open the tailgate, obviously it opens up like a normal tailgate and folds down flat like a normal tailgate. No real surprises here, but this is a multi-position tailgate. That's what Ford calls it. You can unhook this little wire that sort of supports the tailgate, and then you can hook it in a little bit higher up, as you can see right here. If you do that on both sides, then the tailgate rests a little higher. It's no longer flat, and now it's sort of resting angled in the back. The angle where it's resting is equivalent to the height of the wheel arches on the bed. So something could be flat from the wheel arches to the top of the tailgate, or you can stick something in the bed and the tailgate being a little higher will prevent it from rolling out like it might if the tailgate was flat. So that is a neat little thing and you can do it very easily by just unhooking those little wires. One other item worth noting in the tailgate, you have the built-in bottle opener. Over on the sides, you can see this piece right here allows you to just open a bottle. So if you're at a campsite, you can't find the bottle opener, just walk over to your truck and you can pop it open right here. Now Ford says the Maverick will be offered with its flex bed system, which is a whole system of accessories that allows you to customize the bed pretty much however you want it set up. You can have different levels, different dividers, that sort of thing. Now obviously I don't have access to all the flex bed things, so I can't demonstrate everything here, but Ford says that they were inspired to create this system by watching people load and unload trucks at home improvement stores, gardening stores, and college kids like unloading and loading their dorm rooms which gives further credence to the idea that this is a truck sort of aimed at city people, not necessarily heavy truck use people, but those who need a truck to go to Home Depot on weekends, whatever, that's the truck for this. And the flex bed system will apparently help them out. It's worth noting though that even this relatively basic bed does have some interesting quirks and features to it. For instance, you can see these little rails along the side with this movable piece in it. That's for like a tie down or a divider. You can move it to wherever you want to keep the bed divided or cargo tied down. You also have a little lockable storage compartment back here. You can open it up 
and then put stuff back here if you don't want it rolling around in the bed. It doesn't actually lock with a key, but it can lock so it won't come open and stuff won't come out. You also have a power outlet back here, which is pretty nice. Pop open this cover and you have an outlet and you can power stuff, which is especially helpful if you're out in the wilderness trying to use a device like an air compressor, for instance, to air up or down for going off-roading. And next to the power outlet, you have a little light which you can turn on. Obviously, that'll be helpful if you're trying to load or unload your bed at night or find something. You just pop on that light and then you can use it. Pretty easy. By the way, one other tailgate item worth noting before I move into the bed itself, Ford tells me that the tailgate can support up to 300 pounds when it's down flat like this. So if you're using the truck to tailgate at a sporting van or sitting on it with a friend, whatever, that's your weight limit, 300 pounds on this tailgate. By the way, one other interesting item with this bed, you will notice these plastic panels that go around the outside of the bed on top of the tailgate, the sides, they even go all the way up to like the side of the rear window. These are bed rails and Ford says they've put them here, this plastic piece all the way around because they know people will be loading stuff over the bed and they don't want those people to scratch the paint or damage the truck, so you have these bed rails for protection. Undoubtedly something Ford learned when they were watching customers load up mulch or supplies at Home Depot. Moving around to the back of the Maverick for the last exterior quirks and features. There are a few interesting items back here. One is the location of the license plate. You can see it's over on the side, not directly in the middle. Obviously, the tow hitch has to be in the middle, of course, and just based on the design in the back of this truck, you couldn't really put the license plate anywhere else, so it's over on the side, like in a Jeep Wrangler. Kind of an odd position, nothing too weird or bad about it, but it is certainly unusual to see. You also have Maverick across the bed in sort of brawny, muscular lettering, letting you know exactly what you're following behind. But most interesting, at least to me back here, is the hybrid badge. You only have this one little hybrid badge on the outside of the car. Now, Ford tells me that this is the production exterior, how the actual Maverick hybrid will look. And I'm surprised there's not more stuff touting its hybridness, which is something that Ford is very proud of. But maybe, I suspect, their market research has taught them that truck people aren't exactly as keen to brag about their hybrid power as people with a Prius or some sort of electric car and so you just have a little hybrid badge in the corner and you'll be getting 40 miles per gallon city which is pretty cool. And finally, with the Maverick, I want to talk styling and some exterior quirks. Now, when the rumors started swirling that Ford was creating this truck, sort of a sub-ranger in their model line, most people said that Ford was just going to take the Bronco Sport in front and then put a bed on it in back. So this would basically be a Bronco Sport with a bed. That's obviously not exactly what happened, since you have the hybrid powertrain, but also from a styling perspective, the front end looks similar to the Bronco Sport, but not the same. It is relatively distinctive, and you'll easily be able to tell apart the Maverick from the Bronco Sport from the front if you look closely. Now, as for the styling itself, I have to say, I like it. I think it looks surprisingly brawny and athletic and tough like you would want from a truck like this. The entry-level front-wheel drive based truck is always going to suffer from the stigma that it's not a real truck. So you want to make sure it has sort of a brawny, tough look to it on the outside, and they've done that. It doesn't look weak or stupid or pathetic little truck. It has kind of a brawny, muscular look, at at least for a truck like this. And I think they've done a good job with the styling and it's a relatively attractive truck at a relatively attractive price point. And so that's a thorough tour of the quirks and features of the new Ford Maverick. This is an interesting vehicle. Just a decade ago, Ford canceled the Ranger because they said there wasn't enough pickup truck demand below full size. Now, 10 years later, they have two trucks smaller than the F-150, the new Ranger, and now this, the Maverick. I'll be curious to see if this is a hit since it certainly blazes a new trail in the pickup truck world. And I'm very eager to drive it when it goes on sale this fall. Oh.